Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we're looking at the introduction a little bit about electricity, right? So electricity as you know is these with charges, right? So conventional or electronic charges, so conventional means positive charges, electrons means you know the negative charges, right? So there are certain terms that we will encounter during electricity, which is one is the coulomb and another one is voltage, right? So a coulomb is a charge that is passing at a point when there is a current of one ampere. And based on that we get Q equals IT. Right? So we know that a coulomb is the charge, is the unit of charge for Q. Right? So Q is the amount of the charge which measured in coulombs. Right? So based on this definition, it says that it's the amount, it's the charge that is passing at a point of one ampere. Right? So that's by using the formula we can actually get the definition of what a coulomb is. Right? And then we look at voltage. Voltage is work or energy over charge. So let's look at what the definition says. So voltage is the measure of how much work or if you want to use energy, the amount of energy that's transferred by each coulomb of charge because it's divided by charge. So it's the amount of work done by every charge or it's the amount of energy that's transferred by every charge. Right? Now we look at objects moving charges within it. Right? And if charges are moving within materials, then remember all materials are made up of atoms. Right? So if you have a negative electron moving through to produce electricity, then it's going to actually come in contact with some of those atoms. Right? Because it comes in contact with those atoms, it's actually going to cause a shift in direction, right? as well as it can slow down the charge. Right? And slowing down the charge is normally known as resistance. Right? So we look at resistivity of a material. Right? So the, resisti the resistivity of material tells us how much each material, individual materials, will cause the electrons to s the slow down. Right? So all materials have resistance. And the reason for that because they all have atoms. Right? So as charges move throughout the material, they will collide with those atoms, which causes the transfer of kinetic energy. So it slows it down, right? So we know that R big R here is our resistance. So the resistance of your material is dependent on rho here. In this case, means resistivity of the material. L is the length of the material, and A is your cross-sectional area of that material, right? So if we Let's say draw a wire. So this is a wire here. Right? So the length of the wire affects your resistance. Right? Your cross-sectional area affects it. Right? So your resistance of your material is direct proportional to the length. So the longer the material length is, the more resistance it has. Right? If the area is large, then that means your resistance, because it's inversely proportional, if your area is large, your resistance is low. Right? And we, we can see that. So if we compare that size area to this size area, then increasing your area is your, you're increasing the, the atoms that the charges will encounter while passing through the material. And if you increase the atoms that is there, then that means it's going to slow it down more, slowing it down more. Different materials having their own resistivity values, right? So a copper wire has its own resistivity value than an iron, because their atoms are different size, for one, and they actually have different, their atoms compact differently in comparison with each other, right? So the size of the atom can actually cause the resistivity value to be different, hence your resistance value will also be different. And importantly, your resistivity value increases with temperature, right? So if you increase the temperature of your metal, right, then that means you're, you're doing what? So if temperature increases, take a minute, think about it, what do you think will happen Why your resistivity is increased as well?
Alright, so let's go again. So if we increase the temperature, right, then that means it's a metal, and once you apply heat to a metal, then it it expands. Right? And if it expands, then that means we're increasing the area. Right? So if we make resistivity the subject here, it resistivity will be RA over L. So if we increase the area is increased, then that means the resistivity also increases. Right? So the relationship between resistivity and area is that they're direct proportional, which we just noticed there. Right? So increasing the temperature means that your metal will start to expand. You expand the metal means you change the area to a larger area. So therefore your resistivity value also increases. Right? So now we're going to look at our last part of this lesson, which is to derive the drift velocity. Right? And drift velocity is the velocity that the electron will have while passing through. It's the average velocity that the electrons will have while passing through a material. Because remember, each time it's going to collide with different atoms of the, the metal, right? So we're just finding the average velocity to give to that electron while passing through a metal, right? So I'm going to show you how to derive the equation for drift velocity. So let's go. So we start in here with just a simple diagram. So this here is a diagram of a conductor, right? So a cylindrical conductor. It has a cross-sectional area of A, it has a volume of V, and it has a length, let's call it delta X, right? So, the first thing is that we start off by seeing the current that's passing through this conductor, which we just looked at, that Q equals IT, so I is equal to Q over T, right? So, it's the number of charges over the time, right? So let's just use delta T, right? So it's the amount of charges passing per time change, right? So Q now is actually the amount of charge, right? And based on this diagram here, the number of charges would be N V E, right? So where N here is this number of charge Right. V is your volume, right, and E is the charge of the electron. So the Q here is your charge, so it's the number of charges that's flowing times the volume of the conductor times E, which is the charge of an electron, right? And this is divided by delta t. Okay? So now we're going to actually simplify volume in this case. Right? So we know that volume is actually the area times the length. Right? So in this case, it's the area of the cylinder times the length, which is delta x. Right? So we're going to replace volume here with a times delta x. So we have here that N A delta X E is divided by delta T. Right? And then the last thing is remember that delta X is your your length or distance that the electrons will move, right? Now, if we, if we do some little math here, then we can re rewrite this as E A N E delta X over delta T. So this is the same as this, right? All we did was take this part to the end, right? So we have this, right? And we know from lower level that Delta x, which is length or distance over delta t, is the same as velocity. Right? So, in this case, we can replace this with velocity. So, it's 
A E B. So therefore, e, V is I over N A E. And that's how we we'll derive the equation for drift velocity. Alright guys, thanks very much for your watching. I hope you understand something from today's lesson and see you guys next time.